It's Does been it? recording. I should come in and sit down. Chris, what do I say? That was lame. All right, guys, for this week's video, I'm gonna do a new series called Hashtag Ask Chris. Yesterday, I put out on my Instagram and Facebook for you guys to say any type of question you want, and I'm gonna go through and answer as many of them as possible in like five minutes. All right, first question. Are you shooting USA or USCA? USA Outdoor Collegiate Nationals. Yes. Next question, best way to improve bad habit of dropping bow arm. Just don't do it. And a great way to do that is forget about a target, go on blank bail, come up close, and really just focus on that. How many hours per day did you have to spend to get on top of NASP tournaments? Okay, so when I was in back in high school, I shot a ton of NASP stuff, um, and that was super hard, combining it with school and hunting and my other tournament stuff. So really as many arrows as I could until my fingers hurt and really got my form down into a groove. It's all gonna depend on your style. How do you set up your X23s for tuning? Uh, I shoot 2315s cut at 30 and a half inches with 180 grains out front and those perform super well shooting uh, 28 and a half inch draw with like 56 pounds, 55 pounds and they work really good. What is a good national feed a tournament to go to if you have ever been to one? Yeah, I've been to a ton of them and a good starter probably would just be nationals. This year it's, I believe it's in Alabama again. So, you know, check that out, go on USA Archery's website. It'd be a good starter, everyone would be there and it'd be a good feel. How do you deal with pressure at big shoots? We interviewed Jesse Broadwater on Junior Pro Talk uh, last year at Vegas, so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link at it and he kind of talks about it. But for me personally, I just like to clear my mind of everything. I mean, like literally I want to think about nothing and that's super hard to do, but you know, right before a tournament, I just completely try to forget about everything because I know what I'm doing. It's the same target, it's the same distance. I like to get up there and just do my own thing. What is running through your head before, during, and after the shot? Okay, so before the shot, I'm definitely getting in my zone, forgetting about anything. If I was talking to my buddy behind the line, I get on the line, kind of clear my mind. Um, during the shot, I'm paying attention to that I'm doing everything right. If I'm working on something during practice, making sure I'm working on that specific part to get that down. And uh, during the shot, really not thinking about a whole lot, but uh, staring at the middle and doing that shot execution. Will you please bring back Junior Pro Talk? Yes. How do you deal with target panic? Okay, target panic is a super sticky uh, topic and there's a lot of different ways to deal with it, but I would say a general way is to break down old habits, because old habits is what's creating target panic. So forget about a target, move up close, blank bail, get your shot back, and slowly work back in distance shooting to a target until you get back to 20 if you're shooting indoor or back to a distance for shooting outdoor. You still have a complete surprise shot with your back tension, most of the time. Um, you know, as you shoot a bunch, I mean, I've been shooting a back tension for about three years now, and yeah, I get surprised all the time, but every now and then, you know, you start realizing that you're putting a little too much of your fingers into it, and you're kind of controlling it a little bit too much, but overall, yeah, it's a surprise shot when everything's rocking really good, completely surprises me. How do you get sponsored? I had a bunch of people ask me this, so I'm not even going to answer that. I'm going to make a separate video somewhere down the road on strictly how to get sponsored. Which is better, indoor or outdoor season? Um, I would say they're pretty much equal, but by the time indoor season's over, you're ready for outdoor, and by the time outdoor season's over, you're ready for indoor, so they're complements of each other. Okay, for outdoor, what kind of arrows do you suggest? Easton X10 Pro Tours, best arrows on the market. Okay, do you prefer shooting your blade rest in front or behind the tech bar, and why? Great question. Um, with my contender elites and my pro comps, and actually my podiums as well, I shot it behind the tech riser, mainly because Jesse Broadwater did that, and there was some tuning technique theories behind that to have a more center in line with the bow at full draw. But I was just thinking more, and Jesse kind of switched back to in front of the tech riser, and you can really do the same um, tuning procedure with your sight, and that's a whole lot easier to move, moving your sight in and out for torque tuning. So I just moved it back up closer to the riser, and had kind of I still need to play with the sight to really find a perfect spot. Okay, what is your stabilizer setup as far as weight goes, and how you decide on how much weight to put on a certain setup? Um, this is really just a personal question. Um, I'm using Arizona Archery Hot Rods, which I absolutely love. Made the switch to just uh, this past month. And uh, I'm shooting 
pretty much relatively lightweight. I got like five ounces out front and I want to say like 10 or 11 ounces out back. But dealing with the amount of weight, it really depends on how strong you are, how much you want to um, hold, what type of shooting style you're shooting. If you're shooting indoor, you really don't need a whole bunch of weight. You just got to get it to the point where you can hold steady. Outdoor, you might want to add a little bit more weight so the wind doesn't affect you as much. So it really just depends on your shooting style and uh, how much weight you can actually hold. What was your timeline of taking archery from a hobby to shooting professionally and how? Okay, so I've been pretty much shooting archery my entire life and three years ago I decided to sign up for the championship division in Las Vegas because in Las Vegas for the championship division anyone can sign up, you don't need to have an NFAA pro card. So that was really what sealed the deal for me. Shot an 899, super stoked and that was kind of like my realization like okay I could actually do this. So since then, you know I've been shooting a lot of pro uh, class or all pro classes for NFAA and USA archery. I've been shooting um, in the juniors and really um, get to interact with the seniors and eliminations and stuff and did pretty decent um, at a few tournaments. So yeah, it's a really slow gradual. No one's gonna just show up in archery and jump into it, you know, as like a, a cadet or a junior. Um, so it's a really, it's just a gradual progression um, as you get better and better. What is going inside your head when you're about to shoot your personal best? Classic example, you're in the range all by yourself, you're on your last end and you haven't dropped an X. So th this, this little situation can be as stressful as a tournament because you, you, know, you haven't shot a personal best in maybe a year or months and you can really hype yourself out about this. And I like to just, you know, when I'm about to do that or about to shoot 300 or you know 29X, 28X, just really calm down, take a deep breath, stare at the target. Um, get my motions back together, get my shot process running through my head and just go up and make a normal shot like it's just an, your first arrow of that entire game. Okay, what besides actual shooting do you do in terms of exercise or stretching to stay in fit for archery and injury free? The simplest thing to do is to make sure to stretch, stretch before you shoot each time. Super lame, I hate stretching, but it's good to do. When you're 50 years old and you have a shoulder issue, you're gonna look back and be like, dang, I wish I stretched. So I really, really try to stretch before every time I shoot. You know, there's simple stuff, um, not anything crazy like our Archie Stereotypes Part 2, but um, I think you get the gist of it. I also like to work out. I know people like Colby Hanley, he takes it to the next level. If you want to message him on Facebook and ask him what he does, he is he's really taking nutrition and working out to the next level. Um, I'm not quite there yet, but um, I do work out um, most of the time. I do cardio is awesome for our tree. Steady heartbeat, it gets your breathing down. When you're in a stressful situation, you're able to handle it better. And for long uh, days in the summertime at like repeated events and stuff, it really helps for that. Do you sell your old equipment? Yes. How to shoot a bullseye like you? You can't shoot a bullseye like me because everyone shoots a bullseye different. Okay, benefits and disadvantages to increasing scope magnification. How high should I go? So the most common scope magnification is 4 power and 6 power. Um, as you increase in magnification, you're going to see more and you're going to see more of your movements. And for a lot of people, they don't like that because it gives them anxiety in it. They realize how much they're actually shaking because we have a heartbeat. And um, most of the time, we're always just shaking a little bit because no one can hold perfectly still. So it depends on the distance you're shooting, it depends on the conditions you're shooting in, it depends on your personal preference. Um, I shoot a 6, I know Emily shoots a 4, um, I know some people that shoot a 8, which is a little bit too much for me. Really if I could give you any advice, it would be to try some out, maybe try your buddies, you know, take your scope off, switch scopes, switch sights, and just really uh, play around until you find something that you like. How often do you do trick shots? All the time. Not really. I need to do them more and people have been asking me to make a video so maybe there's a video coming soon in the future. Setting up and considerations for outdoor arrows for PETA 50 meter shoots. Again, Easton Pro Tours, X-Pens, best arrows on the market. Um, you can also look into like an ACE or an ACG. Also both really good arrows for long distance, uh, 50 meters, like USA archery style, ward archery style, any of those would be great. I've been having some trouble getting my back tension release to release consistently, so how do you get your back tension to release to release consistently? I made a video on that, make sure to check it out. What's some advice for newer archers? Make sure you're always having fun and make sure to find a coach that'll help you along the way. In what way would you describe archery using only Nacho Libre quotes? 
nave. It's fantastic. But seriously, how often and what methods do you use to perform the initial testings for a bow, and then how would you follow up, say, several months later? All right, so Hoyt releases a new flagship bow, get it in the mail, get new strings on it, set it up, throw all the new stuff. Um, really, I don't even want to shoot at a target for at least a little while. Make sure um, my form's still consistent, feel the bow out, maybe tweak the draw length a little bit, tweak the poundage a little bit. Um, see how it aims, play with my stabilizers. It's really just a long process. There's no, I don't have any unique technique to go through a setting up of each bow besides I always get new strings on it from Podium Plus bow strings. Every, every bow has a different balance to it for each different person. So playing with stabilizers is a big, a big thing for me. How often do you change your bow strings? Um, at least once a year, um, if they start fraying, or really get torn up or the serving starts splitting down by the cams, that's a good um, suggestion to change your bow strings out. But really launching thousands and thousands of arrows out of your bow as like a tournament archer or professional archer, you should be wanting to change your bow strings, you know, every every year, every year and a half. How do you plan a session and what else except archery are you doing for training? So um, it really depends on what tournament I'm training for. So right now I'm training for practicing for NFAA uh, Indoor Nationals in a couple of weeks. So I'm shooting five spot, I'm shooting a lot of arrows. Um, I really want to get into um, high arrow counts, fifth arrow, my last shot, I'm not shaking, I don't get fatigued. So shooting like you know seven, eight, nine arrows an end will really get that fifth arrow to still be solid and maybe have your seventh, eighth, or ninth arrow, you start to fatigue. What's your favorite thing about the amazing sport of archery? Um, I would definitely say meeting new people. I got friends all around the country and even all around the world just connecting every archery tournament. It's awesome. You know, meeting sponsors, meeting people, meeting people that have been in it way longer than me. It's just super cool to meet a bunch of new people. How did I get into archery? Excellent question. I don't think I've ever really shared this publicly, um, but my dad, major bow hunter, um, thought it'd be super cool if I shot archery, so he bought me a little bow, shot in the backyard. I think I was six years old and um, shot for probably a year in the backyard. And then there was a local Joad program at Livingston Conservation and Sports Association. Joined the Joad program, shot one of their bows for a year, fell in love. My dad had to buy me a bow, shot for a couple more years. One of the coaches said, hey, you should try out the state competition. Went to that, placed third. I think it was only out of like four or five people, so middle of the pack, but I absolutely loved it. From then, kept going to state tournaments, decided to go to a national tournament one time, and pretty much just gradually grew from there, going to more and more tournaments, placing better and better at each one, and here I am today. Which bow would you recommend to a beginner compound archer? Hoyt makes a great beginner bow that you can really grow into and adjust with called the Hoyt Ignite. It's a great compound bow. Um, you can shoot for target, you can shoot for hunting, and it's super adjustable poundage-wise and drawing-wise. Do you use a magnifying lens when tournament shooting? Are they allowed? Yes, they are allowed, and yes, I use them. Which do you like better after shooting both, GTX or Spirals? I would have to say GTXs. I shot GTXs on my pro cons for two years. Absolutely loved them. Shot extremely well, placed extremely well in the tournaments. Shot Spirals, struggled a little bit, I think because of how aggressive they were. Um, switched back to GTX for this indoor season, and I've been shooting extremely well, back up to my high scores, and shooting well in tournaments. So if I had to say a personal preference, GTX games for the win. All right, guys, so there is my hashtag ask Chris session. I'm looking forward to doing this in the future, so I'll let you know when I be considering questions for my next video. I hope you guys like it. Make sure to comment if you like it, and check out the other sweet videos from past weeks.